Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. I wasn't planning on doing a video today because I'd already done two, two days in a row, but I just flat out had to with today's news. So I figured I would use this format, and remember if you don't like it, just think of it as just like an extra video that I wouldn't have been able to do if I used my normal format. Either way, let's get right into the news. Yesterday, video cards leaked Intel's entire Cascade Lake X series. We're talking specs, pricing, everything. And what's wild is that Intel had originally planned on announcing it on October 7th. But because of this leak, because it was pretty much completely accurate, Intel went ahead and said, ah, go ahead. And they released it. You can see right here, it's exactly the same as what video cards leaked. And what's crazy is that I called it, not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that, but um, uh, the pricing is unbelievable. I said back when they released this, they were talking about two times right at uh, or up to 2.09 times the performance per dollar when they were talking about this i pretty much said listen for sky lake x to be uh 1.0 times and cascade lake x whenever they're pretty much working on the exact same 14 nanometer process they're gonna have to cut their pricing in half and that's exactly what they did. If we look right here, last gen i9 9980XE, $1,979. The 10th gen 10,980XE, uh, $979, $1,000 less. This is what I call competition, the results of really good competition, the power of it, basically. And to be honest, I really didn't even know Intel would be able to cut the price this much. Obviously, they have some decent margins on their CPUs, especially because they were such a powerhouse for so long. They had zero competition. They could just price it at whatever they wanted to. But one big reason uh, they actually had to price it a little bit higher is because most of their chips are actually on a monolithic die. Now, their X processors are a little bit different, but at the same time, they still have really big dies, and the bigger the die, the lower the yield rate, because there's a higher chance something will mess up. AMD, on the other hand, uses little chiplets, and they basically combine them using the Infinity Fabric, and because of that, if one chiplet's bad, it's much smaller than if one full CPU is bad. So it's gonna be less expensive whenever you have an issue. It's also, there's gonna be less issues because since they're so much smaller, there's a much lower chance of something going bad. Either way, still, they did it. They did what they had to do to remain competitive in the market. Uh, but anyway, let's go through the rest of the specs. Besides pricing, one of the biggest deals is memory. It actually now supports quad-channel DDR4 memory up to 2933, which is the same as Threadripper 2000, as well as they increased the capacity by two. They doubled it to 256 gigabytes, which, hey, that's impressive. That's something that they needed. That's something AMD has had. So they had to do it, and they did it at half the price. Very impressive, very nice. As far as uh, clocks, when it comes to the specs, you can see that Intel's Cascade Lake X does get about 300 megahertz higher turbo boost clock, which I do believe is a single core boost clock between uh, Intel's last gen. And you know what? That is relatively impressive, except for the fact that when you kind of realize what they're doing, you know, you say, hey, it's the same TDP. Well, that's because the TDP is based on base clock and typically base clock either stays the same or sometimes even goes lower. Now I will say that you can look at both of these two chips right here. They actually got a 200 megahertz boost base clock while keeping it 165 watts. So that definitely isn't bad. But at the same time, if you purchase one of their X processors last year, first off, I'm sorry that you had to pay so much when it's now half that price. Second, I really wouldn't upgrade just because if you have an enthusiast line, you're likely overclocking it, unless you're a business or something like that. And if you aren't, if you're overclocking it, you're almost definitely gonna be able to get probably right at just as high. And at the same time, your TDP is almost definitely gonna be very similar. Now, obviously, I don't have one of these chips to test. This is just something that we know Intel likes to do when they quote unquote upgrade their 14 nanometer process chips. So yeah, stock boost can get higher, but at the same time, the TDP is probably gonna be the same difference it would be if you overclocked, say, the 9980XE to 4.8 gigahertz. Basically, I would not at all suggest upgrading. It's simply not worth it. Now, if you can get anywhere over what they're selling their processors for, if you're able to sell it, you know, really, really quickly, maybe do that, and then you can go ahead and purchase the new one. Either way, I do have to give them some serious credit. 
as far as the actual performance, there has been a recent Geekbench 4 leak for the 12 core 10920X. Now, um, this right here is WCCF Tech, and nothing at all against them. Awesome that they found this, showed us this. Um, it's 44,046 is what it scored. Um, but when they compare it to the 2920X, I, I, I disagree with that score. I actually found it went right here. What I like to do is just basically go right in the middle, and we're looking at closer to 36, 35. Um, I mean, you could argue maybe even 34, but I definitely wouldn't say 33,000. So we're talking about maybe a 20% higher difference. Now, the big thing is that just like this, Intel is comparing it to AMD's current gen or when they release their new ones, which they will almost definitely pretty soon, their third gen, it's gonna be last gen that they're comparing it to. And the issue is that, as we all know, AMD did a lot better with the third gen processors. If we look right here, luckily we do have an actual 12 core processor to compare it to. And even 61 pages in, the 3900X is still getting over 50,000. Basically, it's almost dead in the water. I mean, I don't want to say that definitively. And at the same time, hold on, there's plenty of applications that Intel flat out dominates AMD in. There really are. If you use some of those applications that Intel is just better, whether it's their cache, whether it's optimization, less latency in the memory, whatever it may be, there are times where Intel straight up dominates AMD. But at the same time, those people that have those applications probably already know this. But for the vast majority of people, and you, you really can't even use the whole, oh, it's the clocks, you know, you know, single core performance is so much better, which I, I really doubt with these uh, clocks that they show here. Of course, when you overclock it, that can be different, but you actually cannot make that argument with this because these aren't mainstream line. This is their X series processors, and they actually go up to 18 cores. No one's going to buy an 18 core unless they're using serious multi-thread applications. And if they are, most of the time, they're going to be better off going to Ryzen. Basically, I'm seriously impressed. I really am. I'm not trying to bash them. Um, Intel did a great job. Thank you. These are probably going to be really awesome gaming chips. Of course, only for people who have the absolute best graphics card. You always want to get the better graphics card first. It almost doesn't even matter what CPU you have nowadays. Either way, I am impressed and we're probably going to see even more price drops finally. It's definitely something we need between the massive GP price hike from last year, year before that, and then the memory, massive prices in memory. This is a great time to be a gamer. To be a PC enthusiast, it's awesome. Thank you, Intel. Definitely thank you, AMD. Hopefully we're gonna, like I said, hopefully we're gonna see even more price drops down the line. So yeah, if you liked the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. I'm not at all trying to brag or anything like that by saying, oh, I called it. I knew that they were gonna be half the price. No, it, it's the only thing that made sense for them to become double the price of performance as their last gen, they had to cut the price down. Other, uh, unless they did um, 10 nanometers, and even then I highly doubt that they could make such a drastic difference. So anyway, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Is it awesome? Do you plan on picking one up? Let me know, and as always, have a great day.